Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell. And of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very, very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard show to- studio by a man that by the by the name of Dr. Joseph Opard. Joe, Doc, how are you, brother? I'm good. How are you doing, Jay? <laughs> it's awesome to have you. So let me give you guys a little bit of backstory. So I read Joseph's phenomenally profound book, The Nephilim Apocalypse, okay, back in 2018 when Robert Stanley and I uh, were doing a bunch of research on the fallen angels and how they've weaved their way into society and through culture throughout thousands of years. And, you know, when I was doing searches on Amazon and the internet, you know, one of these, his book came up highly recommended and it is a profound book. I literally read it then and I sent it to Robert. I said, dude, wow. He bought it. He read it. He was like, whoa. Uh, And as Joseph knows, I sent him an email like three years ago saying, dude, I would love to do a podcast (laughs) with you. I never heard back. Uh, And that happens, but he just emailed me recently about two or three weeks ago and said, Jay, Jay, I'm so sorry. He said, I would love to do a podcast with you. I was like, yes, let's do it. And here we are today. So uh, let me give you guys his bio. Uh, Amazing, amazing guy. He is an ordained minister of the gospel and the creative director of a Joe Parr media, a creative production company focused on creating more profound insights into the right perception of life. Beautiful. And the spreading of the gospel of Yeshua. After his conversion in the nation of Ghana, he has successfully made remarkable breakthroughs in his ministry. Joseph understands the human mind is complex and diverse and has consistently made successful attempts to help people reach their full potential by making use of their most powerful tool, the positive mind. I love that. Uh, Joseph has ministered in several countries around the world, conducting unforgettable and richly inspiring gospel missions in North America, Australia, Germany, Antigua, Jamaica, St. Martin, St. Kitts, and across several cities in the demonically demonically occupied country of England, <laughs> a.k.a. London, right? He has an honorary yep. doctorate in Christian ministry, a degree in digital film, which is really cool. He has amazing video uh, production, by the way. I'll send you guys his website at the end of this podcast. Uh, and uh, from the International Bible Institute of London, he's also served as a senior minister for Warrior House International. And he still directs his energy towards enlightening Christians and all of you non-believers on how to effectively incorporate positive spiritual values and principles for successful living. Uh, awesome. Again, I'm very grateful to have you here today. So as I do now in these end times, when I have um, you know a person like yourself on the podcast, I'd like to kind of just get a historical breath perspective from you. Where do you see the timeline right now of where we go from here? And if you don't mind, you know, and I know it's an opinion question, but like, what do we really have left before you know, the quote unquote new world order, the Klaus Schwab, let's the meat bugs, you know, these people like, (laughs) when do they actually, when do they actually enforce things to a place where we have to fight back? If that is in fact, what's going to have to happen. The problem is these people go by something called um, problem reaction solution. Um, They set up a problem, then, um, they see the reaction and then they capitalize on that reaction by bringing a solution. Um, But they believe in something called Fabianism. And Fabianism is not a quick um, thing. The reason why we saw a lot of the dramatic things that happened is because Donald Trump and his election interfered um, with their program and their agenda. I'm not. I'm not saying that I'm a fan of Donald Trump. Sure. Um, yep. That's not what this is about because I'm not into politics. However, Donald Trump was trying to bring things back to um, nationalism, right. and their whole thing is globalism right, and exactly. control. Right. And so, when Trump was removed out of the way, they hurriedly rushed. They brought out the COVID vaccines and all the other things that they brought out in order to get um, to speed back up. 
and to catch back up on their agenda. Now, if you want to know really um, the timeline, you have to go and read um, the UN's agenda 2021, right. which most of it has been accomplished now. Right. And the next marker is agenda 2030. Right. And they want to make sure uh, people, especially on certain continents like India, um, Africa, parts of Asia, that they all switch to uh, banking via mobile devices. Right. So there is going to be, um, my, in my uh, personal belief, there will be a financial crash. There will be um, some kind of third world war, which I believe it has already started. Um, there will be famines and all the above. Um, and the reason why I say this as well is because the Bible states this in Matthew chapter 24. It actually tells us what's coming and, right. uh, and the agenda before the actual end comes. So uh, I, we are in the end times and there's a lot, a lot on the table. But I believe 20 um, for the U.S. going up to um, around 2025, because there was a, a website called Deagle.com yeah, I've um, seen that had... Deagle. Yeah, they took all that down. I've still got some of the. You took um, some screen. You got some screenshots. Yeah, I took of screenshots right. of that. Yeah, <laughs> because I did a whole. Isn't that um, hilarious? How they let it, they let the cat slip out of the bag every now and then for the people that are awake, yeah. just to say na 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 na. Yeah, yeah, and now they've they, they've tried to clean it up, but some of us have still got screenshots yeah. of the stuff that they were saying. So, so two thousand twenty five is when you're saying then that. Okay, so you said a lot, and and obviously I'm in yeah. at least ninety five to ninety eight percent of agreement. Um, where we are, you know, again, you know, I think there's we probably should define what the end times mean because, you know, obviously the Bible, you know, all the other ancient texts, the scriptural texts, the Bhagavad Gita, you know, they talk about uh, the time of, you know, the great war between the armies of heaven and the armies of hell, right? Like however you want to define yeah. them, the dark versus the light. Um, but it's not like the end of the world, right? Like, I mean, I know a lot of people think that from a tribulation standpoint or the rapture or whatever they're, you know, been reading that it's like, you know, then, then then you throw in like Nibiru and Wormwood and all these people think that the world's going to flip upside down. But the real truth is that we just have to go through this darkness, you know, whatever it you just defined it as. It's probably all of the above, right? We already know the famine is being engineered in Europe. I mean, I just saw stuff yes. literally two days ago. We know what they're doing in the U.S. with – um inflation and the cost of food and the cost of fuel. This is all being engineered, Joseph. We also know that, you know, they're playing with the economic systems, both blockchain and fiat. They're both completely fraudulent. We know that they control all of them. Uh, and yeah. you're right about the mobile devices. That's because they want the one world digital currency. But <clears throat> from a standpoint of in the United States, in the West, in the higher you know, what they would call first world countries where they don't have as much control because, again, people still have some autonomy. They have guns, right? Like, I mm. think the last bit of mm. autonomy that people really have is they still can arm themselves. Do you yeah. see this, you know, because what Schwab and all of these guys at the World Economic Forum and Agenda 30, 2030 want is a social credit system, which, as you know, has been in place in China for four years already. I mean, they already yes. penalize people by their thoughts and their social media posts, right? But do you see them instituting that in the United States before 2025, or is that something that's five to seven years away? I mean, I, 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 it's an opinion. I, I don't know if they will introduce it, but I do know that the what we call the West, they have to bring it down uh, right. because right. It's, right. it's out of their control. They have to bring exactly. it down for two reasons. The number one reason is it's an aging population. Sure. Um, and they don't have, they were trying to stabilize it by destabilizing the Middle East and bringing the people from the Middle East as refugees and from South America in right. to work in the West right. um, to prop up the system. And there was a backlash for that and nobody liked that. And then the other reason why um, they have to bring that whole system down is it's still too strong on the old system of things. Yeah. So they they when you're talking about India, Africa, and all these other places, Latin America, these places haven't really um, come to the apex of what they're supposed to be in terms of economics. 
So yeah. um, they're easily steered much more than the West, which is strong in a, a cash system, um, but is now switching over to a card system, and then eventually it will be a cashless system. So, right. yeah, I would say uh, um, some of the, the the demolishing, a lot of the demolishing will take place by 2025 for the West. Um, but t by 2030, that's where maybe by then the whole China um, social credit system will be in the West because we have a lot of the younger people who embrace socialism and communism right. in the West. It's it's like a flip. It's like a, it's weird. It's just strange to see it. Happen. Dude, it's mind it's mind blowing that you're what you just said. I mean, you and I were talking off air. They have entrained, I'll say ninety percent, and I might be be I might be being conservative of the young generations. You're right. They have absolutely no historical awareness or comparison. They don't understand that socialism leads to devastation in every society that it has ever been instituted in. We have obviously, yeah. you know, Russia with the fall, yeah. you know, with, uh, you know, Stalin and the purge. Yeah. I mean, I mean, everywhere yeah. in the history, you know, where these were trying to, ins you know, be instituted. And again, obviously the initiators of these, uh, you know, call them economic platforms were demonic satanic themselves i mean like if you read yeah. their manifestos you know where these people got their information from it's you know they call it first first source service to self it, 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 mm. it's insane that people of the young age do not have this kind of background or awareness of like where this ultimately goes the young people yeah. i saw this on facebook i saw this on some media and my daughters are 14 and 12 and so i see it you know and you know not with them but you know in their circles um, it's the right thing to do. Everybody else is doing it. <laughs> I mean, think about that. It's the right thing yeah. to do. Everything, everybody else is doing it. And then if you don't do it, you're immoral. How can you not do that? Yeah. So that's what they've done to these young people, bro. They literally have not allowed them to be critical thinkers and discerning at all. Well, that's, that's not allowed, is it, today? Um, it's herd mentality. But the thing is, the... The herd a lot of the time are wrong, um, and that's the problem. Um, if you follow the herd, you, the Bible says it like this in a different way. It says, broad is the way to destruction, and narrow is the path to eternal life, and very few find it. So, um, exactly yeah, I'm not right. surprised, not surprised. At all. all right, so let's talk, um, and, I, and again, like I told you, you know, I hi highlighted a lot of sections in this book. It's a, it's a profound book. Again, highly recommend you guys get this book, buy this book, support um, Dr. Apar's work. It's amazing. Um, you talked about, to, so the, I'll read this quant. To, uh, to resurrect an Atlantean world. So again, to preface, if you guys aren't paying attention, uh, the USA is the new Atlantis. It was literally since mm -hmm. its inception. We've all been lied to. We, you know, we think about, you know, again, I'm obviously born here and, you know, but, you know, brainwashed, you know, Pledge of Allegiance. I mean, everything is an outright mockery. The, the government or uh, the King of England under conscript of the Vatican has been running the USA since literally the Declaration of Independence. People don't understand that. You do. Yeah. I do. People that actually have historical yeah. perceptive. But so, again, like you said, they created this to resurrect an Atlantean world. Society has been slowly manipulated through Fabian principles to embrace immoral and technological changes. The main way to steer society is through the flow of information, for it is through the control of information that power is distributed or taken away. It would be a mistake not to look at the lives of Edward Bernays and Walter Lippmann, who literally behind the scenes changed 20th century popular thinking and continue to this day. And so what I want to talk to you about is uh, well, hold on. Let me ask this question because this is profound to what you wrote. You said, ask yourself these questions as you read this section of the book. Are you truly free as an individual or are you a victim of manufactured consent, a slave to advertising, branding, film, television, and targeted news media? Are you truly making your own decisions? Awesome, bro. Profound. <laughs> but, but, you know, before you answer, you know, to the audience, are you truly free as an individual or are you a victim of manufactured consent? Joseph, talk about that. 
Well, um, as I stated in the book, um, it's funny how we repeat things like a mantra and don't understand the origins of where they come right. from. Um, right. For instance, the statement which I put in the book, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. <laughs> um, where does that come from? You know, any meal is the most important <laughs> meal of the day. Um, uh, but then uh, Edward Bernays yeah. uh, got together with um, some um, people who just wanted to sell, sell more bacon and more meat right. products. And right. so they came up with the slogan, they pushed it through the medical community using the doctors and so on and so forth. Poor doctors, uh, a lot of the time, they just spout off, especially your general practitioners, they just spout off what they're told. That's why exactly. they're general practitioners. 100%. They leave that one alone. <laughs> so they were pushed into telling people breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And then we ended up with a culture of bacon and eggs. Where where right. we get bacon and eggs from? I mean, right. Um, right. before then, people were having toast, just drinking a cup of coffee. Coffee, right. Um, right. Yeah, and, and whatever they could get. Um, so we've gone from bacon and eggs. Now the other thing now is cereals. So we got your cornflakes and your, um, I don't know, whatever it is that you eat. Um, uh, but it's always being pushed on us. And we're always right. being manipulated one way or the other. And it becomes part of popular culture. And people never really go back and study the origins of where this is coming from. Case right. in point as well with Bernays, um, when he was advertising cigarettes to women. Oh, and, women. Um, uh, to women. Women didn't really smoke. It was culturally offensive to actually see women smoking. But then... Uh, when the whole suffragette thing started with um, women's lib and all of this other stuff, he was in the background and got a bunch of women um, to light up cigarettes during, I think it was an Easter parade, and they started to call the cigarettes torches of liberty. Can you imagine? Right. And, and they were pushing smoking cigarettes as torches of liberty, and, and the, the sales of cigarettes went through the roof. Why? because now women had joined in and it was all for greed. So all of this exactly. stuff was for greed, but behind it was the commercials to get us and to steer us in a manner to get us to buy into an agenda. And it's still happening now. In everything. So, yeah. yeah, even funnier, you know, and you wrote this. I didn't know this, actually. I mean, I knew about Bernays and everything that he did and the manipulation and the uh, persuasion. But uh, so so let's set this up so people know this. Uh, and again, I know a lot of you guys do, but I, I want to say this anyway. But uh, so Bernays' uncle was Sigmund Freud. Yes, Sigmund Freud. Yeah. So the people in the eyes of Bernays and Freud were simply animals needing to be managed or manipulated, which is you and yes. I know is the herd. I actually call them the hordes. Right. Yep. So. And, and this is profound stuff, by the way, the underlying motivations of the human animal. Now, again, the reptilians, the Nephilim, whatever you want to call them, the Dark Brotherhood, literally thinks of us as cattle, Joseph. You know that. They we're, do. We're known they as do. the Goyim. Yeah. Right. The Goyim. Yeah. There's so many different cattle, names. Brought. Cattle. The cattle. Yeah. Exactly. So if you think of this, and this is genius stuff, but the underlying motivations of the human animal, the sheeple, were according yes. to their beliefs, as stated below, self-preservation, security, sex, and aggression. It was believed that if you could harness those four things, you can get people to do anything. And then you go on to say, let's look at some examples. But let's just go back or not even go back. Let's look at the present day. Dude, every single thing that is being put mm -hmm. forth in front of us through these screens, whether it's Hollywood, whether it's the Internet, whether it's the television, whether it's this, every single thing you could literally look at and check box one of those four things. Yeah. If not, sometimes yeah. they do them all four. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's yeah. insane. And here's the craziest thing. This is, you know, figured out in the thirties, bro, as you know, with technology now, which is their main connection to the dark Lords, uh, they listen to our thoughts, the, uh, excuse me, our texts, our recordings, and now the AI, which obviously controls all of this and is you know monetizing and monitoring, it's booing both. Uh, yeah. 
serves us ads based on our conversations and our texts. And of course, yeah, our social media listening. comments. Yep, yep. Because the, the technology is always listening, always it's listening. Insane. When you think your phone is down and you're not using it, the microphone yes. is still listening. And if the mic's not listening and you have that that a camera nearby somewhere, including your smart TV, right. it's also watching you. Anyway, let me Dude, that it's it's up. so mind blowing to think about this. And again, to take this much deeper than you even wrote about it, you know, and again, you wrote this book in 2017. You're, you're a seer. Yeah. I mean, the truth is, is that it's so far beyond our ability to even comprehend it because, you know, we're talking about, uh, you, you know, you talked about Project Mockingbird and, there, and you know, and, and, and obviously there's MK Ultra. There's like there's like three or four other CIA special projects or code names that you and I don't even know about that yeah. are ongoing right now. And as you said, they have weaponized propaganda, which is now called social discourse or whatever. They change the names yeah. every 10 years. Yes. Yeah, they, yeah, they do. Public <laughs> All opinion. The time. Yeah. So yeah. but but like. The truth is, is, you know, going back to what we were saying about the young people, they didn't have a chance, bro. No, they, they did. Didn't. So for you and I, they didn't have the technological means developed mm -hmm. yet to totally full spectrum enslave us. Whereas the yeah, younger yeah. people grew up with parents, with that, whoever yeah. else, putting these things in their hands at two and three years old, dude. Yeah, they were using yeah. screens at one. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. What were they going to do? They were captured. Yeah, they didn't have a chance. So no. the, the AI has been their surrogate parents for, that's right. for a while. Yeah. That's right. And that's, and, and that's how they think. You know, I say it yeah. all the time, and I've seen it in my own kids, and I regulate the use of technology. But, you know, it, the truth is, as a parent in the world that we live in now, in this rebuild of Atlantis, we're back almost to the height of it, bro. Yes, uh, yeah. How do you how do you completely block it off? You would literally have to live in a mountain community, isolated from, you know, all culture, all technology, them, you know, all their their con conveyances, and you would have to homeschool your kids. You would have to grow your food on your land. I mean, again, I'm not saying it's not possible, but in today's modern society and world, it's almost out of reach for all but like, you know, maybe half a percent of people. But I will say this to you, and I know you agree with me. This is where we're going, bro. We're going, we're going to have to go back to that because well, they're going to move everybody into the metaverse. Well, that's, that's why they've been showing us through movies like the Hunger Games. Sometimes exactly. when we watch these movies, we think Predictive it's just programming. It's they're telling us where they're steering yeah. society. So, exactly. um, right. you yeah. know, they're, they're telling us there's going to be those in the smart cities and then right. there's going to be those who decide to opt out and they're going to live an agrarian kind of lifestyle, that's us. A low, that's low technology. Us. Yeah, that's, that's all that's of us. where it's going to be. Because, yeah. be. because let's talk about this. And again, for you guys listening, you guys know I bring on the best people. If this sounds dystopian or it sounds negative or it sounds you know, uh, Jay, it's too depressing. Well then you know what? Opt out, turn the show off right now because you're not willing to deal with the truth. The truth is what Joseph and I are saying is the truth. Okay. The divine intervention will come later, but right now we got to go through what we got to go through. And if you're not willing to have what I call a backup plan, which is again, Joseph, let's be honest about this. When they institute a social credit system, if, and I believe that there's some form of it, like you said, of digital currency, there will be some way for them, if they engineer collapse, World War III, fi famine, whatever it is, collapse of the dollar, they will get us to ch make a choice, like you said. And then when you have yeah. to make a choice, and obviously people like us are not getting chipped, you can't force it on us, you can't do any of this enslavement, you know, transhumanism, demonic cyber Satan stuff. So we will have to go wherever people like us go. And, and you know, it could be communes. It could be, uh, you know, charted areas of land. 
in South America, in North Africa, in, you know, the mountains of uh, the West of the United States. You know, I, there's a lot of places in Mexico that are already building. There are a lot of expats already yeah. building these type yeah. of places. So there are people like us that are prepping. I wouldn't say we're prepping like, you know, the end of the world, end times, yeah. you know, yeah. 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 But yeah. preparing for the future. So it's like, if you don't understand this at this point, then you know what, man, whatever comes to you is what comes to you. And opting into their demonic, you know, again, uh, what's his name? Uh, Klaus Schwab's, you know, agenda to 2030. I mean, let's yeah. face it, Joe. I mean, Joe, nobody's talking about this, but literally the metaverse is soul capture. It's yes. soul capture. I mean, I mean, they are really, and like I said, they've been using different films like Ready Player One right. and all these other things to tell us, look, this is the direction we're going to take you. But exactly. the man's got some, sorry, i got to say it, he's got some balls. Because he does. He, he's turned around and said, you're going to have nothing and you're going and to like be it. happy. That, that, that That's kind of saying that people are going to be in some kind of drug state. So right. something's well, that's the coming metaverse. down the pipe. Yeah, That's the metaverse. Yeah. So think yeah. about this. And, and and they've already done it, you know, and I, by the way, I saw you wrote a book on fasting. I want to talk to you about that at the end. So, I mean, I know we yeah. I do, we're, we're definitely, I call us children of the light. The, the reality is, <clears throat> is that um, the drug will be placation, right? Because yeah. if you are so miserable where you have no money, you don't really have any access to travel. You can't like enjoy your physical material life, which is you and I know is, even, isn't even real anyway. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you're devoid of connection. You're, you, you know, you're inwardly turned. You're totally disconnected from spirit. You're totally disconnected from God. Uh, and your life sucks. Dude, you're going to literally stick out your arm and say, let me live in the metaverse. Because in the metaverse, I can imagine that I actually exist in a positive, you know, uh, exciting way. My life sucks so bad. So you're right. It's been predictive programming through TVs. And then, of course... The young people um, being bred to believe that socialism and totalitarianism is like a, the preferred method. Go along, yeah. get along, right? It's the right thing to yeah. do. Everybody else yeah. doing it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They will be so enslaved and entrained by that thought pattern, that style of life, that it will be very easy for them to take whatever it is, right? Because their life will suck so bad. They will have no freedom of expression. They will have no intellectual curiosity. Their heart will be closed. I mean, bro, you already know this. The majority of kids under the age of 30 don't even have relationships. They don't even have man, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend. And then you've got all the other stuff, which I can't say because they'll delete me. I mean, it's insane what the dark side, the dark brotherhood, let's just call them that, has done to the generations that are completely ensconced in technological means, which again is mostly the younger people. Mm -hmm. I mean, the older groups, the baby boomers, as you know, are also brain, brain, you know, brain entrained by the television. Yeah. Fox but News, what's coming, what's CNN. coming next? Yeah. What's coming next though, when um, they start doing them brain implants, Elon Musk. Oh God, um, dude. With that dude. Neuralink. And then he's got the, is it Starlink? Right. That, that he's setting up with they all just the program your, They completely make you an auto. Uh, yeah, they just put that, they plant that thing in your head. You won't even need a TV. Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. It makes me laugh that people think that Elon Musk is on the team light. I'm like, he has $680, $680 billion of net worth. Joseph, that's yeah. more money. You could feed the world a yeah. million times over in perpetuity. There would be no world hunger. There would be none of these issues. This entire planet is the dominion of you know who and his brotherhood. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and the yeah. purpose is to get out. The purpose is yeah. to connect with your higher self spirit. And then once you get that awareness, however you want to call it, that connection to spirit, 
then eventually when your time is here, you get to leave. It's not, yeah. it's not to yeah. build a castle and to leave money no, to your no, families here. No, no, no. It's, it's really we're here for each other. And our exactly. purpose is connected to helping each other. But that's right. Folks don't Service. understand that. They don't. It's it's all about serving someone else with with your gifts, your abilities, exactly. And, exactly, and and who you are, being who you are. Yeah, bro. It's my. It's it's so mind blowing to see people get caught up in the trappings of money. And I love your comment. I want to go back to that because you have an amazing comment about money in here. I hopefully I will find it. Usually I just open right up to it because I'm creating that. <laughs> but you said you said um, money. And again, there's a lot of statements about, you know, money and, you know, what's in the Bible about the root of all evil. But you said that yeah. it's not it's the morality of the person with the money, because let's money, face yeah. it, money is literally energetic currency. It is it yeah. was manipulated, like you said in the book, too, through usury, right? Yes. Through the money changers, yeah. through yes. debt leveraging, through, yeah. uh, you know, collateralized, you know, all these yeah. you know, negative financial instruments, fractional reserve lending, all yeah. this nonsense. But in truth, like you said, the morality of the person. So the decency of the human being. I hate mm -hmm. saying just human being now, bro, because like, who knows? <laughs> I mean, how many beings are on the planet right now? I mean, between yeah. all the things I've seen and read, it's like, dude, there could be like a hundred races here, right? But at the end of the day... <laughs> Regardless of whether you're a reptilian or a human or something else, it does come down to your morality, your integrity. Are you a service to other being? Are yeah. you in service to creation or are you in service to self? And the service to self people are all about the money, bro. How can I yeah, screw yeah. someone else out of yeah, more money? Yeah. How can yeah. I block other people? I mean, you know, you, you write about in this too, corporations. By their very charter, the purpose, and again, people don't understand this, the purpose of a corporation is to outcompete everyone. Yeah, it's else. profit. The motive is profit. That's, that's so think that's about that. Motive. If you are achieving your ultimate goal as a corporation, then everybody else who's not part of your corporation gets screwed over because you have to be number one. I mean, dude, all these third dimensional trappings and constructs, they're done, bro. They cannot yeah. survive and the, and they know it. And that's why they're pushing us into this, you know, like you said, Orwellian nightmare, this dystopian yeah. technocratic transhumanist, you know, my friend, Leo Zagami, who's the guy that writes, uh, you know, confessions of an Illuminati He's an amazing author. I just did a podcast with him. It hasn't released yet literally two weeks ago himself. And he agrees with almost everything you said, but he's like, they're literally pushing us into the new world order where he calls him cyber Satan, which is what you said. The AI is yes, going to just show yeah, up. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's how it's going to be. And everybody's going to see him. And I believe the whole Elon Musk thing. Um, well, when I say everybody, I mean, everybody that connects to the, the system, um, the artificial intelligence system um, controlled by quantum computers. And that's where I believe this whole thing is going. Um, D wave and, and all the other exactly. stuff. Um, yeah. it, once people get that implant, the Bible actually speaks about um, people uh, actually coming under the power and the rule and the dominion of this Antichrist. It's not right. everybody, but but a great majority of humanity. And I believe it's it's the ones who keep taking all these technological, right. biological upgrades. Um, yep. Because the fourth industrial revolution, and um, this is what people have to understand, especially um, the younger generation, they need to understand it's not about um, all these gadgets that we've always right. had as past generations outside of us. That's not what it's where this is going. This right. now is about where Satan has always wanted to be right. inside the human being. Right. Um he knows God has always been in the human being by right. his spirit and That's right. gotten into the human being by his spirit. And he's never been inside the human being. So and that's now, what they want. That's what they want. That's what they want. They want to be inside. And can you imagine to surveil you from the inside? So you thought it was bad surveillance from the outside, but it's going to be surveillance down to your heartbeat and what you're thinking and so on and so forth, which is absolutely crazy. I, I just, uh, 
beautifully stated. I, I literally just finished a book. And again, man, like I'm like you, I'm pe- pe- totally divinely inspired and guided in everything that I read. It comes to me in perfect time and fashion. I mean, bro, I mean, let's be honest. The God did not want you and I to speak three years ago. He wanted yeah, us to speak yeah. now yeah. because yeah. your information yeah. And our ability to disseminate this is much more readily. If I would have had you on a podcast three years ago, you know, people would be like, these two guys are nutters. But <laughs> exactly. Now, and they wouldn't believe it. But yeah. now they're not going to be like thinking we're nutters because all you have to do is open your eyes. And again, you know, I love saying this and I know, you know, you even use this in thing, you know, there's those with eyes to see and ears to hear and those that are not. Yeah, and where we're at right. at this point, if you do not have the eyes to see and the ears to hear, then it's okay. You're still walking yeah, the yeah, same yeah. path that all of us, yeah. but whatever happens in the army, in the fight, in the end game, in the move, the rapture, mm-hmm. you know, the, the shift, so many names for it. You ain't making it. You got another yeah. round yeah. until you graduate. Yeah. And that's fine, right? Like we're not going to yeah. judge or yeah. condemn you. You have not as a soul evolved enough spiritually mm-hmm. to understand what's happening. And bro, you already know that. Like, you know, again, people call them NPCs, backfill people. Uh, yeah, I've sheeple, been hearing that NPC people, NPCs, backfill people. But like again, the Bible talks about this. The Bhagavad Gita talks about this. Uh, you know the uh, what was the book? Uh, the Enuma Elish. You know all of these ancient texts have similar storylines. As and, and as you yeah. and I were talking off air, we know that the Dark Brotherhood has hijacked every one of them to keep yeah. people off the truth. And also as part, because God allows this to uh, let us evolve, right? Like we have yeah. to do the work to see the truth. I always say only a yeah. pure heart can discern truth. So, mm. so the truth is, is that it's up to us as an individual to do the work, to connect mm-hmm. the spirit, the higher self, to actually be able to interpret the truth. And again, as you know, so many people are turned inward. They have no heart-based connection. They have no spirit connection. They are. I mean, dude, look, I mean, think about this. How many people today now, Joseph, don't even believe in God and they say, I trust the science? What? <laughs> science. But, but that was the plan. Right, because exactly. if you read Sir Francis Bacon's book, exactly. The New Atlantis, which is yeah. what my book was actually based on. When you read the book, he actually states a place called Ben Salem, which is America. Right. And he yep. says that in Ben Salem, you would have. The, the Israelite people, I'm not going to go into who they are and all that other <laughs> stuff, but, and he talks about Christians as well, all coming together under the umbrella of technology as exactly. government. So that yep. was the plan. So the inception of America was all about that. And that's what this was all about. This is the rebirth and, or the pushing for the rebirth of what was going on before the flood of Noah, why the Lord destroyed the whole earth. I don't believe they were not technologically advanced. I believe they were technologically advanced. And that's why Yeshua, as the world calls him Jesus, but he says in Matthew chapter 24, he says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the son of man. So when he comes back, He's saying that it's going to be like how it was in the days of Noah, right. which means there's going to be some major technological advancements that was similar to what was before the flood. And, yeah. and that's that's where we're going. OK, so that's that's I agree 100 percent. And let's just for, for clarification purposes for the audience. We don't know the timeline, Joseph. We've been lied to. They've lied to us. They've hijacked and manipulated timelines. They lied to us about dinosaurs. They lied to us about all these ages of yeah, 400 yeah. billions and 600 yes, millions and 800 yeah, billions. Always. All nonsense. We yeah. know for a fact that radiocarbon dating and all the other stuff that they have, you know, quote unquote, foisted upon us, like you say in the book, like think about the Smithsonian Institute. The yeah. Smithsonian Institute has stolen and hidden every single remnant of the giants. And obviously I'm saving the yes, one for the end of this broadcast. Yeah. But every time somebody would find, you know, 10 foot, nine foot, eight foot, 13 <laughs> foot, even 16 foot bones, they would just come away in the middle of the night. Yeah, And they would come haul everything it. away. And if you were, you know, they would basically, somebody would tell you, you know, that, let's just call them the men in black. 
They would literally say, if you tell anybody, you know, everybody in your family will go away and you'll still be here. So don't tell anybody, you know, we know what they do, but the bottom line is, is yeah, dude, like this is the game plan. It's always been the game plan. It's been, you know, foreshadowed, like you said, you know, what they thought, you know, and maybe some of them weren't as dark as, you know, initially intended, but they summons what they were thinking. They were summoning benevolent angels and they were summoning the yeah. fallen angels. Right. Yeah. And so the fallen angels can appear as benevolent angels of light. You know, it's talked about in the Bible with Lucifer, right? Yes. <laughs> the shining ones. So, yeah. I mean, like, you know, all this stuff has been a game plan for them when they sank Atlantis. And by the way, some of the books that I've read says that there could have been like, you know, before the flood, post flood, like you said, first off, you're totally right about the technology that that is all hidden yeah. from us. Uh, yeah. Even the Bible hides it because I think at the time when it was first being written, there was such a lost translation of what was happening. Again, mankind has kind of got amnesia because we've had all these yeah. like, what do you call uh, end times events or resets or whatever you want to call them collapses. And so there's been a loss of technological transfer. Uh, and then, of course, the fall and just manipulate everything. Right. Yeah, so if we yeah. did really rise from the ashes, like amoeba coming out of the um, first flood, and there may have been many floods. I think there were many floods. Mm. I really do think that mm. the before, before the, you know, before the flood was like you said, a time of massive technology, giant yeah. beings yeah. eating people. Uh, you yeah. know, like you said, you said in the book, uh, they will be, Jesus said they will be eating and drinking. That's right. Cannibalism. They literally, he might literally have been referring, I have to show you something. I'm going to blow your mind in a second, but he may have been referring mm -hmm. to the end times when the Nephilim, and let's just go right into the Nephilim right now. It's a perfect segue. Okay. Come back as their discarnated entity, demonic, whatever you want to call them, you know, shape-shifting, etheric yeah. forms uh, where they're walking around. So, so this is, I don't, uh, I should share my screen. Yeah. Let me do that because it's going to be better rather than putting this up to the, um, so dude, I'm not kidding you. This is literally from yesterday. I had to go buy some bug stuff. We have like an ant infestation in my backyard and I walked into Lowe's. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I'm going to share this. I should have had this on my screen, but I'll have it in two seconds. This is what they have in Lowe's on the Halloween display right now. Like you can't even like, this isn't even. I mean, you, when you talk about um, predictive programming and propaganda, look at this. I mean, dude, this is insane. I literally mm. saw this and I was like, you got to be kidding me. Okay, check this out. Can you see that? It's, it's look coming at that. up. You see it now? It's it's taken a while, but I'm sure it'll be there in a second. They're probably trying to block it on your side. <laughs> it's crazy. I see it. So basically, if you guys can't see it right now, hopefully. Oh, uh, I can see it now. Yeah, I see it now. Yeah, that is up. a 20 foot Nephilim demonic giant. And then Joseph, look below at the giant skulls. You wow. know, the big headed, wow. the big headed wow. skulls. Right below it. This is in the freaking home, you know, uh, not Home Depot, but Lowe's. Wow. I mean, wow. I, I mean, I walked, I turned around and I walked and I was like, whoa. I mean, I took a picture of it. I was like, this is what they're, this is what they're doing now. They're putting this yeah, they, out. They, they, they're mocking us, basically. They're, they're mocking <laughs> us. But Joseph, I, I truly do think that what you wrote about in your book is true. And again, Robert and I have basically been able to, uh, decode this too. They are going to be walking around soon. Yeah. They're yeah. coming I back. That. I believe that. I believe they're coming I back. I mean, it has to be that. Would they be putting this stuff out? Mm. It's crazy. Hopefully I can actually figure out how to stop sharing. There we go. Uh, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's literally mind blowing that they're mm. putting this stuff you know, I, I showed it to one of my private groups and, you know, a couple of them were like, oh, no, dude, it's just, you know, Halloween stuff. And I'm like, no, it's not. Tell me what show it's from. Is it from Disney? Is it from the X-Men or Avengers or Marvel or any of this stuff? You know, is there a motive or a corporate theme behind it? And Joe, there isn't. 
So to me, that's more proof that this is them flexing and they're like, get ready. Well, they don't Again, care anymore. They're, they're telling no, no, us they what, what they what they want to do and what they're going to do, and they're not even bothering to hide it Joseph, anymore. Joseph, if you go on Netflix, and I don't watch any TV, but my daughter and I will every now and then like just jam out on the couch and just like put something on, you know. And I and honestly, I I really need to stop. But it's like kind of like a, a emotional, just like you know, long business day. Let's just watch something funny. Every single show on Netflix is demonic reptilian, uh, vampiric, satanic. I mean, it is insane. And again, all these like very high level A-list actors are now in there. Like I literally turned it on three nights ago and Jamie Foxx, very famous A-list actor in Hollywood is now in these schlock, you know, Netflix vampire movies. And again, dude, vampire, as I told you before off air and then earlier in the show is their veil for the reptilian demons shapeshifters the vampire yeah, yeah. becomes a bat i mean come yeah, on man yeah. they've been doing this to us for thousands of years as you know in the 16th 15th 14th century it was fairies and trolls and all and you know, the other things the sprites gargoyles <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i mean it's like you said like in the city of london why do they have dragons you know, on the perches on the outside. And yeah, you know, even with gargoyles in churches, like why are there gargoyles outside of Catholic churches? <laughs> they, they, they tell us everything. Again, you have to have eyes to see and ears to hear. And dude, so many people don't. They don't. Yeah. 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 Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user, maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below, thepeptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. Well, it's, it's um, incredible that they've got that um, skeleton up, but like I said, it's like they're they're mocking us, trying to yeah. let us um, know yeah. that you know they are on this agenda. And the Bible does talk about uh, men's heart failing them for things that are coming up right. on the earth. That's um, exactly right. Now, now let's decode that statement. Robert and I talked about that statement. Mm -hmm. So I think that that can go one of two ways. I think, and 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 I and, and of course both too. But I think that you could look at that as. It's already happening. Myocarditis. Mm. Yeah, SADS, yeah. right? Sudden adult death syndrome. Nobody oh, even yeah, says SADS. anything. Right? But you could also say, and this is where I go, you know, it's perfect, but this is where I definitely put on my hat. It could be them showing up at 20 foot like that, walking through the streets, eating people, and then that's when men's hearts fail because they're not ready to see it. And... It's fear, right? Yeah. You, you, you're either in awareness, love of God, spiritual connection, and you know, or you're not in any of those things. And so you're in fear. And then, mm -hmm. you know, the dark side's got you under lock and key. And so you see something like that, and you're like, oh, your heart just gives out, dude. Mm -hmm. if, if you and I saw something like that, we would be like, well, yeah, I knew it was coming. Guess it got here sooner than I thought. <laughs> But the average person would literally have a heart attack, Joseph. That's what oh, they, they would, would do. They would. But it would still be scary if we saw it. Um, no, it would definitely be, be scary. Prepared. It's like I said when but I was it, in the we'd store. We'd be more prepared for it. Yeah. Well, yeah. A hundred percent. And that's exactly, that's a good point. I mean, it's like I saw in the store. I walked back and I just like kind of was like, wow. And then I was like, you know, mm. I have my uh, sunglasses on. I took my sunglasses off and I was like, you know, I was like measuring cubits, right? I was thinking of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Like, how tall is this thing, right? Because, I mean, you know, these ceilings are 50 feet in these stores. Yeah. You know, and yeah. you look at that thing and I'm like, my God, that is legitimately close to 20 feet tall. Wow. So, I mean, they're, wow. they're, they're, they're telling us. This isn't even predictive programming. This is future forecasting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're letting us know. So, I mean, if that statement is heart, the the, the, the hearts of men will fail them. Yeah, it's and one it of the two the things, things it's the coming up on the earth. And uh, so, I believe that it's 
literally some beings or some kind of technology right. um, that has been hidden right. under under the earth or in the earth. And if we talk about under the earth or in the earth, we're talking about a whole civilization and totally. underground cities and domes totally. and so on and so forth totally. that, that yeah. you know a lot of people don't really want to admit is is going on beneath that that's where they floor. went joseph um, when, when atlantis fell that's yeah. where they went the dark brotherhood yeah. went into the inner earth and that's how they yeah. now and have been forever are manipulating world governments through technological yeah. advancements they yeah. hand them over and then they say we need your souls or as you know they're eating yeah. people blood yeah yeah yeah, but that that's there. The cannibalism is 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 what the Lord's talking about in Matthew right. twenty four. People don't really read it like that, no, but it's it's also there in I think is it is it um, Joshua or Judge? Yeah, I think it's Joshua where um, the spies are sent out and they come back and they give a bad report. No, I think it's Numbers. And when they, they come back, they say that the land is a land that eats up the inhabitants. Right, exactly. Eats up the inhabitants. <laughs> inhabitants. So it's talking about cannibalism again, again. There's so Look, it's, there's parts of Deuteronomy. I'm like you. And obviously, you know, it's great when you read other people who decode parts of it too. Um, yeah. There's parts in De Deuteronomy that are basically like a cookbook. They're literally telling you how the cannibals – the giants, the Rephaim, whatever you want to call them, were eating people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how they were to prepare the the feast, you know, and it was wow. the sacrifice. And, and you know, they, you know, most uh, Bible literalists interpret it as like, oh no, it was a giant boar. But dude, it wasn't. <laughs> it was humans. They were serving humans to their god, giant. You know. Nephilim. Mm. It's dude, it's insane. Mm. It, it, it's so insane. But again, people don't want to hear that. I mean, how many people, you know, when they start talking about, you know, I, I don't again, I don't want to say this word because our podcast will be deleted, but you know, the A, the D, the R, the E, the N, yeah. O, the H. Yeah. They're harvesting this because these beings, which again are not human, they're Nephilim, uh, whatever you want to call them, the sons of the fallen and daughters, uh, call them reptilians call them dark brotherhood, whatever minions, archons. There's a million names for them that, you know, the, the middle yeah. Easterners call them Dijin. There's so many names, Yeah, yeah, yeah. but they literally do eat human blood. Yeah. It's nuts. Yeah. Yeah. And their offspring who, um, unfortunately I will not <laughs> go too deep into who I empower. Right. They, behind the scenes get into these blood rituals and yes, they, they do, do. steal, um, unfortunately. Yes. Um, yes. If we were to bring up um, certain um, persons like um, Mr. Epstein, okay, right. and different ones going behind the scenes, they right. are still sacrificing children Absolutely. and they are still participating in, in drinking blood because of adrenochrome, right. apparently, right, exactly. which is yeah. like a, yeah. a drug to them. Um, and also, um, they believe that it it gives them the ability to stay young, drinking, um, you know, blood. Anyway, disgusting. It's but true. Anyhow. It's a hundred percent. And again, you know, as I will say, it, and I won't sh pull, pull it up right now, but you know, I've been going through the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, both Billy Carson's decoding, and then the original from Doctor Dory Hour, whoever he was. I'm sure he was a pseudonym, but uh, it says it all right there. He talks about. Again, how they crept into the councils of men, and the only way um, that they could be um, appeased was through blood. Yeah. And again, yeah. dude, this is literally, if we go to biblical scripture, this is the abyss. Yes. It, yeah. it, when, 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 when Archangel Michael defeated the great dragon, Satan, Lucifer, whatever you want to call him, the mm -hmm. Demiurg, there's so many names. It says that God cast them down into the abyss, which was a lower... Yeah vibratory mm. dimensional mm. field, whatever you want to call it, where they still had their mm. fallen angel powers, but they yeah. could not exist in our human dimension, which is, you know, think of it as the third. But as yeah. you said earlier, they're trying and have been trying to bust their way in yeah. through CERN, through yeah. NASA, through yeah. all this dark, yeah. you know, Atlantean yeah. technology that they have now re resurrected and recreated. Yeah. 
They're literally yeah. trying to get their master lord, whatever you want to call him, the head, the head red dragon, back into yeah. here to so that, mm -hmm. like you said, so that they could somehow do what God has done with us with the Holy Spirit, the higher self. It's you know, get yes. into us yeah. so that they can pi yes. pilot us. Yes, yeah. Because that's that's what this war is all about right now. That's what yes. everything is about. We think it's about money, um, right. but no, right. it's a war to control us from the inside, not not even from the outside anymore. Well, they they have specific bloodlines, um, right. and that's right. why they talk about right. Uh, the right to rule, and they talk exactly. about having blue yeah. blood f flowing through their veins. When we hear right. that, we don't fully understand and decode what they're saying, but what they're right. actually trying to tell us is that the right to rule on earth um, comes from having um, someone who can trace their origins back to, to that them. Nephilim yeah. fallen that's angel right. bloodline. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's what exactly it's right. all about. And them. by the way, that's why, I'm glad you said that. This could, we could go on forever. I want to, I want to let you go here in a second, but uh, the, the blue blood is literally, and again, there's been a lot of great authors have decoded this, but it really is a mixture of reptilian and mammalian. And that's why, uh, we have red because of the iron and the hemoglobin deposit, and they have blue because they, Joseph, mm. they really were reptilian. Again, this has all been hidden can, from us. But the can I, can I talk about that? The reptilian thing, it's funny that you should bring that up because in the Bible, there are different orders of angels. You mm -hmm. have what's called the cherubs, and Satan is a cherub. And the seraphic. A seraph. And the seraph. But the seraphs, they um, when you Serpent. read the original language, they're Serpent. either serpents, which is reptilian, or exactly. fiery creatures. So they're which would have not been just a dragon. serpents. Thank you. Serpent and fire. There you go. <laughs> look, uh, look, there's a great author I need to connect you with now who's written a book. His name is Pierre Sabak. It's not his real name. I'm actually very good friends with him. I never say his name on it. I'll, when, we, when, we're not live, when we're not recording, I'll tell you who he is, and I'll, I'll literally send you an email at him, and he will send you his books. He's amazing. He's written a book okay. called The Murder of Reality, and it's literally a total decoding. He's an actual etymologist, so he's a root language mm. origin guy, so he knows it all. And then the other mm. book, which is his most recent book, is Holographic Culture, which mm. is how they it, – it's, it, it's a bigger version of your book, basically. But wow. um, the, the Murder of Reality you will love because he talks about that seraphic fallen class and how they – manipulate and control everything so i mean again if you want to just like flash it forward to now it's literally reptilians yeah. in the inner earth who control all of the black projects special projects i mean you know i mean i mean they've let people out re real humans and they're mm -hmm. out there telling people but as you like you said like you know most people they listen to these people and they think they're insane because yeah. Yeah. and then you know like you said they they do always reveal things to us but they usually use people that they'll people will just you know slander and laugh at because they're like that guy's a coot yeah. but they're yeah. they're really telling you the truth yeah and i think yeah. maybe there's some kind of rule that they have to let us know they do. um yeah yeah, I, I just think there's some kind of rule that they have. No, that I they think have so. I think, it's a, I think it's a universal law, Joe. I really do. I think that they have to give us the ability to consent to their BS. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. like, look, I say this all the time. Every time you buy one of these, whether it's a, a tablet, a phone, a, a laptop, even a desktop, there's consent forms and there's fine yeah, there is, there is, that there is. no one reads. <laughs> there is always, the it's days, a covenant basically. Paper. Well, jo you remember yeah. in the old days we had to sign paper yeah. and now yeah. it's literally you're at Best Buy or one of these big block techno places. And you literally just say, they they just hold a screen in front of your face and they don't even let you read it. They just say, click here, click here, click here. Click. So you're yeah. clicking and consenting to them stealing mm -hmm. your soul, listening to your voice, hijacking your text messages. I mean, dude, I, I already know this, and I know you know this too, but when they do, if they do, the social credit system, they've listened to everything that you and I have said in the last 20 years. They've also yeah. recorded everything we've typed, every email we sent, every text we sent, everything we transcribed audio, every cloud document that you've written, they've read. Yeah. So as soon as as soon as they institute something like that, dude, you're immediately me and you are a quarantine list. We're like, bad. oh yeah, but but you know what? They don't even have to read it. They have AI doing that. 
Exactly. <laughs> no, that's what they, I mean. I, but I'm just saying, if they institute it, like instantly, you and I are enemy oh, yeah. number one. You know, there we're oh, yeah, I, I, like I say, I, we're the quarantine list, which instantly means we have no bank access, we have yeah. no Stripe or PayPal access, yeah, we have yeah, no yeah. medical benefits. You know, we have no way to go their medical thing. Basically, you and I can't even go into a grocery store. You yeah, know, we would have yeah. to go into some place that would literally barter with us so that we could eat. So, I mean, again. We're going to have to be living on a farm, growing our own food, connected, disconnected from the beast system. That's the only option. Well, I mean, what I'm other learning. Do you have? I, that's what I'm doing at the moment. I'm out here in Ghana. I'm learning how to grow food and um, awesome, man. I'm, um, move up into the, the mountains probably soon and and learn how to grow food on a larger scale. But yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I mean, doing it. Um, whether they do their thing or they don't do their thing, we have to do it because I'm not eating bugs with Klaus Schwab anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Let the meat bugs do this crazy, man. Well, listen, yeah. you are an amazing human being. I'm so grateful that you came on here. Let me put your stuff up, um, you know, and anywhere else that you want to send somebody. So, I mean, you know, so you guys obviously uh, visit his website, you know, buy his book. Do you, do you prefer they buy their book from you directly or on Amazon or you don't care? Oh, it's all right. They can go to Amazon and buy it. Yeah. yeah. So you guys go and buy I, I want to see, I want to see ahead. Amazon's reaction. They'll probably uh, be shocked if they see the book selling that much. <laughs> so they, a, bunch of, a, bunch of people, a bunch of people go on Amazon and buy it. But I mean, honestly, guys, like it's absolutely a profound book. I mean, when I read this three years ago, uh, I was, I was, shit, dude, it was four years ago. That's how fast time is moving. Um, I was blown away then. And I just literally read it. There's so much in here. Uh, and it's very well written. You're, you're, you're definitely a scholar. Uh, and able to, you know, I always say that when people can take very disparate past parts and, and, and components of history and weave them together in a very, very concise narrative, as you've done, it takes a genius level intellect. So, I mean, great job. So, guys, uh, go to what, go to Amazon, buy the uh, Nephilim Apocalypse, Rise of the Nephilim New World Order. By the way, were you going to write a second volume in the book you said you were? I was I was about to release a, the volume two, which I will have to revise it. But most of the stuff that I was going to release in volume two has already started happening. So, right. uh, you know, <laughs> and I'm kind of more, <laughs> it's funny, I'm kind of more prophetic. So me releasing right. that stuff now, people will probably think, oh, you, you know, you're only writing that because of what's happening now. But yeah. I knew right. the stuff was coming. Ago, well, I mean, it's um, obvious in your book. I mean, it's obvious in yeah. your book. Just me rereading it last night, you know, what you wrote was like, I, there were like five or six instances. I was like, wow. You know, like he, yeah. he called it exactly. But I mean, again, all of us, you know, how would I say it? Like under the influence of the spirit, yeah. being led by the light. Yeah. We see things. You know, the light of heart awareness, the light of the heart, which is really God internal is lining it's a beacon for us bro like we're being yeah. led down the right path it's just the way it is and and that's why yeah. my, it's mind-blowing because the people not like us and again there's no judgment or condemnation they're being led the opposite direction because you yeah. know who they're the influence of mm, mm. that's just how it works yeah but you can't tell them they have to learn themselves yeah, and, you know, this is yeah, about the inside job yeah it's it's a war war to try to get them to be become aware. That's the thing. And, the, and you know what? And, and if they got to go through the end times apocalypse and, you know, you and I are moved to the new earth, the earth, you know, the thousand mm. years with the reign of mm. Yeshua, then that's mm. it. And you, you know, you know, however, however it plays out, you know, everybody is still on the same path. You know, not even the dark side is absent of the love of God. They just yeah. see themselves yeah. as, as, as separate from the love of God. And that's on them. They're living in service mm. to self ego. Reptilian mm. consciousness. I like calling it reptilian yeah. consciousness. That's really what it mm. is. Mm. It literally mm. is demonic reptilian consciousness. They're attempting all the time to get into our heads, to get into mm. our uh, soul, you know, spirit bodies. And mm. you got to say no. You know, you got to live upright. You got to live mm -hmm. consciously. You got to live in a vibratory state where, like you said, you're serving everybody else. You're not yeah. about the yeah. money. You're not about taking yeah. advantage of people. You're literally about yeah. lifting others up. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I agree. That's, that's the way. Joseph, man, mm -hmm. I truly appreciate you being here, man. Amazing. So again, guys, go to josephopar.com. His Facebook is Joseph Apar. He's also got a bit shoot channel, which I'm not even about to say out, but it's on there. So if you guys want to go check him out on bit shoot, you can just check him. You can just search him on bit shoot. 
Uh, and by the way, uh, check out his movie, which I just watched last night. What was the name of the movie that I just watched last night? It's um, Third Temple, part one. Third Temple on his website. His video production is absolutely amazing, so, so definitely check that out. So again, Joseph, I truly appreciate you. So guys, again, remember, support the amazing, amazing people that come on the Jay Campbell podcast. Buy his book, Nephilim Apocalypse. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. I will see all of you guys very soon.